Hello everyone, welcome to Lotus Heart Tarot. I am so happy to have you here, finally. Uh, we are getting a tornado, I mean a hurricane, and um, you can tell what I'm more afraid of, the hurricane or the tornadoes that come with them. Um, where I live, I'm up on a hill and I won't get flooding or anything, but I am, you know, probably 60, 70 miles from the bay. Um, so who knows, but I, I intuitively know this is going to be a stronger storm than I think they're even calling for right now. So I had to prepare and now I am super happy to be here with all of you and to be in this energy, in this space, in the calm <laughs> and, um, yeah, ready to dive right into your reading. So, uh, I just want to start by thanking everyone who has subscribed to my channel, who regularly watches, likes, shares, subscribes, and supports me. I deeply appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. For those of you who are new to my channel, welcome, welcome. I'm very happy to have you here. Um, just keep in mind, these are general readings. Take what resonates and leave the rest, all right? For spirit, I mean spirit, please, for Pisces. For Pisces, what does Pisces need to know? What is in Pisces highest and best to know right now? What can you show me for Pisces? For Pisces. For Pisces. For Pisces. Wow, okay. Wow, Pisces. Confidence. Okay. Okay. Pisces, you're getting ideation, disruption, and balance. And then you have confidence on the bottom of the deck. Um, I'm not sure if this is you, your energy, or if this is someone close to you. It could be a significant, you know, your significant other, or it could be, you know, a coworker, a family member, someone. Either you or someone in your direct proximity. You know... <laughs> It's like I have an idea or I have an awareness or I have a realization and then immediately it brings up this blockage. Immediately it's like either my mind is telling me all the things that might go wrong or all the things that won't work out or all the reasons why I just want to shut down and I don't want to pursue it. I don't want to follow it. I don't want to open up to it. But the balance card is here and immediately when this balance card came out I got the impression of temperance which is a card of balance and um but it is something that happens over time and I think that that is the real thing that I'm picking up here is that this is something that has taken time to sort of open up to or to sort of come to terms with or come to a space of okay yeah green go you know what i mean i'm gonna move on this i'm gonna take action on it and um i think it does require confidence i feel like someone it, it's almost as if someone is gaining the confidence to go for something to to it, something that they had an idea about that they their initial reaction was to sort of shut down or to sort of block it off or to sort of kind of even possibly create or you know, uh, how do I want to say it? Like create obstacle or create delay around it. It could be, you know, the disruption card is pink and white, which are colors associated with the heart chakra. So it could be like a heart chakra blockage that this person, you know, had to work through, had to, had to heal or had to come to a place of balance with where it's like, it's good to be, um, uh, you know, it's good to be somewhat skeptical or it's good to, you know, have people prove to you that they are going to take action, right? Um, or that they are going to put their money where their mouth is. But there's also a bit of, you know, you you can't know the end in the beginning. You know, you, you um, I literally, I was just in my Jeep earlier and the song by Garth Brooks, The Dance came on. Um, and I know I've channeled that song before. I immediately felt it when the song came on. And again, this is coming up. 
It's like, even if he would have known at the end how everything was going to go, um, you know, he's, he, he's, he might not have done it. But because he didn't know, he took the risk and he's glad he did. Even though I think it didn't maybe work out right for him or the way he had hoped, he, you know, it was worth the dance. And so there's kind of this energy of, you know, if I, if I never take the risk, if I never take the action, if I never, you know, if I never kind of go for it, I'll never know. And with the confidence, it's kind of like getting to that space where you can be as sure as you can be, you know, uh, we don't know what life has in, in store for us. We don't know what, what's going to come tomorrow or the next day or the next day, but Today, right now, you know, knowing what I know, I can feel pretty good about taking this chance, okay? So, um, let's go deeper. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think that basically, uh-huh, so the... The energy on um, on this is that I feel it's like someone typically is a bit of a runner. Someone, you know, when things kind of, um, you know, when something comes up that seems like a, a challenge to this person's sense of safety, it brings up a lot of unsureness, a lot of insecurity, right? Because um, when we're a secure person, we we know, you know, uh, we know what our priorities are. We know what we want. We know how far we're willing to go. We know how to have boundaries and to sort of safely move toward what it is we desire. When we're typically someone who's insecure or possibly avoidant or anxious, right? Um, we typically run from situations that call to us those feelings, right? And it makes us, it, it, it almost exacerbates our nervousness or our anxiety or our fear. And, um, and then it makes us feel like, oh, I don't know if I want this anymore because I don't want this feeling that I have right now. And so there's this disruption, there's this kind of, this blockage, this shutdown. And you have prideful on the bottom of the deck. And it's interesting, right? Because prideful and confidence are related words. They're not the same and they're not opposite, but they're related. Um, prideful is something that I feel like has a bit more of a negative connotation. Um, confidence is kind of moving securely. It's like, well, based on what I know, I'm making the right decision and I'm capable of this and I'm rising to meet this occasion and this is an opportunity for me and I'm saying yes to life and I'm doing it, you know? And I'm going at it with all my best energy and all my best intentions. Prideful is that my pride comes first. So as long as my pride is intact, as long as you don't injure my pride or call my pride into question or, you know, um, make me feel so nervous that I can't be in the energy of pridefulness, then we're fine. But the moment anything comes with my pride, my ego will take over and the answers will not be loving. The answers will come from that space of ego. So for some of you, this disruption, may have been a separation, may have been this person shutting down, blocking off, walling off. Um, and it may have taken time for this person to be able to find some sort of space where they feel comfortable and confident. Oh my gosh, you guys, the dragonfly. <gasps> Poker face. Okay. Um, wow, the dragonfly. I feel like this is a bit of a sign. You know, we've had some very strong dragonfly conversations recently, haven't we? And I actually watched 
Um, and for whatever reason, you know, I swear our phones listen to us, right? But in my YouTube feed, there was an entire, like, educational video on the dragonfly. And, like, the family Odonata, which is what dragonflies are, predates dinosaurs. Like, they have fossils of them. And the way that they fly, like, everything, it's so fascinating. They are actually, like, really phenomenal. <laughs> I am so happy that I watched it. There's different kinds of them. But, oh my goodness. Anyway, um, and there are people just studying them. We don't know everything there is to know about them. It's, it's wild. They're very, very, they're ancient, amazing. I will never look at a dragonfly the same way. Anyway, um, you have this karmic relationship. So this is bothersome to me because it's almost kind of one of those situations where there could have been a third party. And it's like the minute I start feeling like, you know, I'm having to go too far out on a limb or I'm having to be too vulnerable, I may run to a third party who doesn't ask anything of me, who, you know, is, is, is just there and allows me to get away with whatever I want in the relationship or whatever, you know, I don't know. Um, but it, it that can be, um, <sighs> then you have the dragonfly and it says lighthearted and adapt, finding out and change things coming to light and heal. You know, we all have the capacity to change. We all have the capacity to adapt. We all have the cap capacity to, you know, this, in this picture here, the dragonfly is what's called weather veining. You know, it, it's kind of like holding on to this branch and it's, you know, figuring out, you know, where's the wind blowing from. It's probably smelling and seeing, you know, a, a whole bunch of things. It's, it's basically taking a beat, like a pulse, you know? And, um, and you know, we all have the capacity to do that in life, to weather vane, to go, what direction am I, am I going in? Am I happy with that? What do I see coming if I stay on this path? You know, that, that deep kind of introspection of, you know, um, how, how am I doing? What's going on here? And, you know, we all have the ability to heal. We just have to want it. We just have to open up to it. We just have to say, you know what? I don't want to keep going on in this wounded way. I don't want to keep, you know, experiencing the same thing over and over again. I don't want to wound others with my wounding. I, you know, I, I want to be able to live my life to the fullest. And in order to do that, I have to heal. And so with this dragonfly energy, this is all about transformation. This is all about, you know, saying, okay, I have the capacity to steer my ship. What direction do I want to go in? And, and, and with what energy, you know, with, with what is my priority? And I feel like this is one of those energies where somebody is going, okay, this is all I'll ever be able to experience when it comes to love, when it comes to experiences of the heart. If I can't allow myself to be vulnerable, if I can't move beyond this nervousness, this fear, this anxiety that is induced every time my heart gets involved. And I need to look at why, and I need to look at the reality of where you know, being like this is going to take me and keep me. Um, do I like it? Is it where I want to go? Is this where I see myself? Am I being honest with myself? Am I being truthful with myself? You know, am I, am I sort of, you know, fooling myself into some kind of illusionary thinking that I can go on being this way and then sometime down the line just choose to be different or just choose to reconnect with Pisces or just choose to you know, start a family or, you know, have something different in my life. That's not realistic. You know, the, the, the moment we become aware of things is the moment we begin to have choice in the matter. And that is the most powerful place. You know, that's where we're steering our ship. That's where we take over the helm. You know, that's where we're like, okay, you know, I, I acknowledge, I know I need, you know, to heal this wounding. Um, because I'm tired of it dictating the way my life goes, the direction of my life or what, how deep I'm able to experience emotion or feeling or contentment with another person or even myself. Um, and, and you see, then we have this healing heart. We have this energy of, okay, 
I'm choosing healing. I'm choosing a different path. You have on the bottom of the deck this poker face energy, which says taking a chance, risks and options, not showing hand, gambling. Well, this feels like someone who became aware that they wanted something or that there was a connection or that, um, you know, there were feelings or there was a deep soul connection even. And it immediately caused them to shut down. And then it's taken time. You know, they had this sort of reaction to the emotion. And it's taken time to come to a place of peace, to come to a place of acceptance, to come to a place of balance, to heal, to work through um, some of the, you know, wounding that caused the disruption in the first place. Pisces, this can be you, this can be your person, this can be a mirrored situation where you're both kind of experiencing this. Um, but with the energy of Poker Face on the bottom of the deck and the Confidence card, it very much feels like someone is like, okay, now I'm in a place where the choice actually is mine. And I am ready to take a risk, you know? I may not um, just come running in the door saying, I'm ready to take the risk, I'm ready to take a leap of faith, but um, I'm showing up in an energy where I know I'm at the helm of the ship and I know that it is within my power to choose and it is within my power to not have disruption in my process anymore because I have healed. I have taken stock of this. I've taken a breath and a beat to, to allow my awareness to come to this place and to prioritize healing uh, for, for this wounding so that I don't have to. I'm not a slave to the wound anymore, basically. I can take the chance if I want to take the chance, which is different, very different. Oftentimes when someone's a runner, it's like the gun goes off and boom, there they go, you know? Um, it, it's, it's a reaction. It's, um, it's, a, it's almost like muscle memory. It's not something where it's like this person really is like standing there going, well, do I want to run from this connection or do I want to stick with it? You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, um, it's more of a reaction. For Pisces, for Pisces, please spirit, for Pisces. Okay. Man, you guys just keep getting the same cards every day. A um, little bit different compilations of them, but very, very similar cards. I don't know, maybe some of you are dealing with an air sign. Maybe even, you know, we're now in Libra season, and um, it can be that um, air, the, the you know, Libra season is significant. Um, you know, we have this eight of swords here and we have this queen of pentacles. And then on the bottom of the deck, we have a knight of swords, man. And I mean, the knight of swords is such a Libra energy. Oh my God. Um, all right, guys, here's what I'm getting. I don't, I, I like a part of me feels like there is a very mirrored energy here. Um, it's crazy, but it, it, I feel it like a duality to it. I feel almost like a masculine element and a feminine element. And that doesn't mean like if you are in a same sex relationship, it, like that's fine. There's always like masculine energy and feminine energy. It doesn't mean gender. Um, we pers we personalize everything. We make everything about the body. It's so crazy. And the body is such a small, the body's just a vehicle. It's crazy. It's a small, small part of it. Um, but anyway, you have the eight of, of swords with this queen of pentacles. And it's kind of, it's one of those things where it, it can't even be where someone is unable to see their value um, where someone is, you know, it's almost like they're programmed into kind of believing the worst about themselves or believing that they are only capable of so much. 
a lot of times programming like this comes from parents, unfortunately, or it comes from being bullied or it comes from, you know, having that really terrible teacher at a critical time in your life that, you know, just really was like telling you you were stupid and, and you know, all this stuff. I, I know someone who was colorblind and in, kin in first grade or kindergarten or something, they were doing colors and um he couldn't get he didn't they said you know you pick up the purple crayon i think they were teaching directions and the teacher said oh my gosh you're so stupid that is not purple that's blue or something like that you know and the kid was colorblind like it wasn't a stupid thing it was a, i don't see it thing you know but the kid carried that i'm so stupid for how long because they picked up a blue crayon instead of a purple crayon and really was chastised for it it's terrible um, you know, you, you have the power to be a positive light or a negative light. <laughs> I mean, or a negative, you know, force in, in everyone you come across life. You know, make a conscious choice. Um, with the Eight of Swords here, it's just, it's like these may even be all the things that were said to this person in their life that ripped them down or that tore them apart or, you know, and, and even kind of took over their mind, their mental body, their way of thinking of, you know, well, this was said to me, it must be true. Well, this was said to me, it must be true. Well, this was said to me, it must be true. Um, and even, you know, especially like, uh, you know, sometimes you'll have like a grandparent or something that was like born and raised in the same state, never left. And they have a very like myopic view of the world because, their part of the world is so small, they don't really even know what's beyond it. And oftentimes, I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be, and I hate talking in gross generalizations, but you know, it can be where that person is very skeptical of anything that is outside the bounds of that place or, you know, oh, well, they're crazy over there or the city is scary and dangerous or, you know, da 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 da, da. And, and those, that kind of programming can also keep you very small or can keep you from, you know, maybe you want to be a singer or a dancer and it's like, you got to go to the city to do it, but you've been programmed your whole life that the city is a scary, dangerous place. And so you don't ever go, you don't ever try, you know what I mean? Um, it can be any of those things. But when, when we're talking about this energy in terms of the Queen of Pentacles, it's everything that keeps us from understanding our worth or our value. It's, it's all the thoughts that we think, everything that's ever been said to us, all of those things that have kept us in a, like a small space that have kind of entrapped us into a way of thinking or even thinking that we're not limitless or that everything isn't possible, you know? And when we take on the Queen of Pentacles or when we move towards that energy, we are really removing each and every one of those swords. That's what it takes. You know, a, a lot of spiritual teachers will tell you it's not about learning something new. It's about removing the things that, you know, have, have created barriers against your limitlessness, against your sense of connection to all that is. And so, um, you know, it, it can sometimes be where we actually have these experiences that are trying to stretch us or that are taking us into scary, frightening territory, you know, of being vulnerable or, or being at risk or, you know, taking a chance that help us to find where those barriers are or those limitations are so that we can remove them, so that we can make our world bigger, so that we can push those boundaries out even further and even further. And, um, you know, when we do that, we, those are experiences that contribute to that pentacles energy, that that's real world experience that show us what we're capable of, what, what, what we, what we can achieve when we put our mind to it. You know what I'm saying? Even things that we didn't know we could do until we tried it. And so, you know, that's what I see here, even especially with this arm gesture of the queen of pentacles, holding that pentacle out in front. Like, I'm not afraid of anything. You know, I now know my, my worth. I know my value. I freed myself from this cage. And with the Knight of Swords, there, there's a swiftness with this energy. There's a, a fast-moving energy. And this can be someone coming towards you to speak their truth, to, to be able to say, hey, look, you know, I w I, the way I was thinking, the way I had been programmed, what I believed about love or life or myself or my capabilities or my worth or, you know, whatever it may be, um, 
I challenged it. I pushed those swords out. I'm, I'm seeing things differently. And now I have the freedom to really come toward you and to speak my truth and to say, you know, this is really how I feel. Or this is my truth, even just. Hmm. Well, there's that temperance energy. Yeah, look at that, man, amazing, beautiful. Um, again, I keep getting this could easily be a mirrored energy between you and someone, right? So with that balance energy, I was feeling the energy of temperance as being the answer, as being the, you know, where we find the balance between, you know, um, uh, sort of like um, protecting ourselves and, you know, going for it in life, taking the risk. And with temperance in reverse, with the eight of swords, it's sort of like, you know, the eight of swords, while it may sound awful, it is sort of easy, right? Because you're not being challenged, you're not being pushed in any direction. You're kind of safe there um, because you're not, you're not pushing any boundary. You're not pushing anything out. You're just sort of in a comfort zone. And with the temperance in reverse, it's like in order to, um, to experience the energy of temperance, you have to have another energy coming in. So it's either experiencing something you haven't experienced before or something outside that Eight of Swords energy. And so we don't have the ability to find our balance. We don't have the ability to temper this with anything else. This runs the show. This is all that matters, the Eight of Swords, when we have nothing else to, to temper it with. Um, and But with the, the Queen of Pentacles, there's this energy of... Um, you know, having kind of pushed those swords out, kind of having like taken some risk, kind of having discovered what we're capable of, you know, having real true proof that like maybe we do deserve more than we thought we did, or maybe we are capable of more than we thought we were. Maybe we are smarter than we thought we were. Maybe we were just colorblind. <laughs> maybe it wasn't like, you know, some fault or flaw of our thinking or our intelligence it was literally just that we we didn't see it you know um and so there's this world card energy where we are now closing out this cycle that prevented us from being balanced and prevented us from healing you know because those swords it's it's like the disruption it's like I get so far and then boom, I shut down. I've reached my limit. I can't go any further. I can't do this anymore. You know, I can't be vulnerable. I can't take a risk. I can't, I can't do those things and I'm done, you know? Um, and so it doesn't give me the opportunity to have any other kind of experience to, to, uh, to be able to say, to mitigate that, that mental process, you know? Um, but with the hangman, this is like, wow, looking back, looking back across my past experiences, looking back on how this went, uh, looking back on, you know, even this particular relationship or this particular thing, it's like, I actually learned a lot from it. I actually got a lot of enlightenment. I actually was able to find that limitation and that, that, and, and make the choice and make the decision to push it, to to figure out how to lift that sword and at least put it further out. You know, I, I was able to get a new perspective. I was able to look at things from a, in another way. And in doing that, I found a truth about myself, about the situation, about my way of thinking, about where it came from, about how to change it, about how to transform it, about, you know, my own capacity to be the captain of my own ship with the queen of, of um, Pentacles. Mm. Nine of Cups, Eight of Cups, and Death. Three of Swords. Man, this is intense. Um, you know, especially with this Dragonfly card, it is sort of asking myself, am I happy? Am, am, do I feel, you know, emotional contentment really comes from a sense of, I like who I am. 
I like my life. I like what I'm creating. I like what I'm doing. You know, I, I'm feeling fulfilled. I'm feeling that, you know, my life is, is, is a true testimony to what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling and what I'm doing. And it all reflects each other. My outside reflects my inside. We're in harmony. We're in emotional contentment. I feel good about it. Uh, and so it's really hard to do that when you're just living in a comfort zone, you know? Yeah, you can find, um, you can find contentment there, but it's not the fulfilled kind. It's the safe kind, you know, typically. Um, and with the, the queen of pentacles being clarified by the death card, well, the death card and the eight of cups are kind of coming on the queen of pentacles. I won't say that they're clarifying it, but the world card was clarifying it. And that is the closing out of a cycle. And we see that that closure came through the process of walking away from what was no longer serving us and allowing ourselves to transform, allowing the part of ourself that was creating a blockage between us and what we wanted to transform, to die and to open up. And, um, you know, we see that, that huge transformational energy with the dragonfly and now we're seeing it again with the death card and the eight of cups is, you know, the willful choice to change, you know, it is the willful choice to walk away and to say, I know there must be more than this out there and I'm going to find it. I'm going in search of my emotional contentment. And in order to do that, I have to walk away from this, these thoughts that have held me in this place that have prevented me from being able to heal or able to balance out this way of thinking with any other way of thinking. And, um, you know, this is coming through the sense of suffering or the sense of wounding. And it may be that when, you know, I, when I went to lift that sword and the eight of swords to take a risk or to at least see if I could push it a little bit further out there, I realized that the reason it was there is because there was wounding underneath it. You know, there was, there was pain, there was fragility, there was vulnerability, and there was this desire to avoid ever experiencing that again. And that's why I was protecting myself. That's why I was keeping myself safe. Wow, yeah. This moon card was spinning and was really more reversed than upright, but I'm putting it upright. Wow, holy shit. Man, um, excuse my language. So you have the Nine of Cups being clarified by the Page of Pentacles, which is like, you know, understanding my own emotional contentment and, you know, having the bravery to pursue it, to walk away from, from the things that were no longer serving me, um, has, has taught me a deep spiritual lesson. And it's something that is going to serve me very well on this journey. And with the death card and the eight of cups being clarified by that moon spinning, a lot is being revealed to this person about their true nature, about life, about their subconscious. Things from their subconscious are coming up to be processed, to be released, to be let go. Um, you know, and with the moon, it does also represent, you know, deep feelings that we hold within us. And, you know, a lot of times we're sort of taught to, you know, keep a stiff upper lip or to repress our, our emotions or to suppress our emotions. And that never really works for anyone. You know, I mean, we can, um, and we can create these emotional blockages for ourselves, but it's not that we need to suppress our emotions. It's that we need to release our emotions. We need to observe them because they're telling us something. They're informative. And then we need to let them go. We don't, we don't stuff them down, but we also don't unpack them and let them stay and take over our entire life. You know, it, it's like a thought. A thought can be a good thing, you know. Um, without thoughts, we probably wouldn't have, you know, a, a cure for whatever. I don't, I don't, I'm not thinking of anything off the top of my head or space shuttles or, you know, space travel or, you know, we wouldn't, you know, even have like genus and species. We wouldn't even, you know, that was someone's thought. Oh, we need to actually label these things. Oh, we actually need to like take care of these things. So, you know, thoughts in and of themselves are not bad, right? But when we let the thoughts unpack and stay and take over our life and prevent us from you know, pursuing the things that we want to pursue or, you know, um, self-sabotage, you know, like lead us in totally the wrong direction or cause us to believe things that are illusionary or not even real. 
Um, that's when, you know, we get led astray. So it, it's not about controlling or suppressing anything. It's about observing and releasing, um, you know, cause it's just information. It's not, it's not the end all be all. It's not like, you know, I, I don't even know how to say it. Um, but with the moon card spinning, you know, this is things coming from the subconscious into the light. This is things being revealed to us about our true nature or about the true nature of feelings. This is us maybe even releasing deep, deeply held feelings and beliefs and things that have been sort of controlling our behavior or preventing us from living our highest and best life or going for the things that we want in life. And it's just like letting them come to the light, observing them and then letting them go and going, oh, how sad, I know where you came from. You came from that teacher who yelled at me and told me I was stupid because I was using a blue crayon. You know what I mean? Um, so with the Seven of Swords here, you know, th this is all about self-sabotage. This is where we are misaligned. And this is about, you know, I'm actually feeling this sense of him looking at all these swords, all these things. Um, and oh, I keep seeing this phrase over and over again on social media. I don't even know what it's in relation to. I, I think it's all different things. Like one of them was a Libra meme. Um, but I mean, I'm literally seeing this everywhere. And it said, the trash takes itself out. Um, and it's kind of, it, it's one of those things, you know, when our thoughts become to the surface and we're able to see them and we're able to see the role that they're playing, that they're, that they are having the counter effect in our life. Uh, they're taking us further away from where we want to go or they're, preventing us from being our true and authentic self, then, you know, we, once we become aware of them, we can say, okay, you're not going to control me anymore. You know, I'm not, I, now that I know that that's, that that's what's been driving that bus, that that's why I'm so far to the left or so far to the right, or I'm, you know, I'm not on my center. I'm not my pillar of consciousness or how I feel and what I think are different or what I'm saying and what I feel and what I think are different whatever the case may be, this is where that misalignment comes from. And now I can see it. Now it's exposed. Now I'm looking at it. And now the trash is taking itself out because I'm aware of it and I'm releasing it and I'm letting it go. Um, all right. Wow, two pages and a five of cups. You know what I'm getting from this? It's almost like, man, I wish I would have realized this earlier. Um, but it's also giving me the vibe. The page of wands is like where we choose the adventure, where we, we decide to go after what we desire. We make the choice and we go for it. And with the Page of Swords in reverse, it's kind of like, um, uh, you know, and this can be sort of like an aha moment. Like a lot of times I'll read reversals, especially pages because they're messages. And when I get a page in reverse, I think, well, this is a message from the divine or this is some, you know, big lightning bolt kind of moment. Um, where it's kind of like, oh, now I understand what has stopped me from going after what I really want, what has been the blockage or what has gotten in the way. And now it's like, I'm seeing it so clearly. And with the five of cups, it's like, am I too late? Has the milk already been spilled from the cups? Like, is there any way to save the situation? Is there any way to rectify the situation? And it is, it is also almost like mourning or grieving for the past decisions that I made that were not in alignment with me. And all of the things that I said or did that I wish I hadn't said or done that was coming from that place of misalignment within me that was preventing me from feeling confident to go after what I wanted that insecurity that sense of smallness that sense of I need to stay in my comfort zone kind of energy Man, oh man, tarot. Woo! Yeesh. Um, so the page of wands, you have justice. 
And, you know, I just said the page of wands is like making that decision to go after what I want. And, you know, with a page of swords in reverse, it seems to me, especially with the five of cups on the bottom, that in the past there was something preventing me from making that choice or from being able to make that choice. And with justice here, whatever that is, it's balanced out. You know, we got that card of balance. We got that um, uh, temperance energy in reverse. And now we have the justice upright, which is saying, you know, I have recovered my balance. I'm empowered. I'm making my decisions. And I... Injustice, I don't know if you guys can see this, but she's got one foot kind of sticking out underneath her robe on the ground to say that her choices and her decisions are firmly grounded in what is real, what it, what can be seen, what is known, what there is evidence, what there is proof of. And um, they're always well balanced between, you know, what is in the highest and best good for all. And with the sword up to the sky, it is a decision that is informed by the highest and best. And it's, it's, this is saying there is nothing preventing me from being able now to make my own decision. And, you know, it's like where emotion in the past may have caused that disruption, that feeling of vulnerability, that feeling of, oh God, I'm going too far out on a limb or my heart's getting too involved or like I better shut down because you know, if not, I'm really risking getting hurt or this is going to take me outside that comfort zone. It's going to take me outside the, the safety of the eight swords surrounding me. You know, um, justice is saying, no, I'm in control. I would never let eight swords control me. I would never allow myself to be self entrapped. I would never allow my emotions to prevent me from choosing what I want. This is saying I can make an empowered decision that's in my highest and best and that's in the highest and best of the situation and for all. Um, you have that page of swords in reverse clarified by the nine of wands, which is like also a pretty prophetic thing. It's saying, you know, like I, I, I'm, I'm getting insight into all the ways in which I protect myself, all the things in which I have built these guards around myself for that, you know, um, that, you know, come from a place of having been wounded. I mean, this, the nine of wands is the wounded warrior. And it's like, my story, my narrative, the things that I can't let go of are all the wounds, all the times things didn't work out for me, all the times that I got hurt, all the times that wrongdoings were done to me, da 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 That is the way that I narrate my story. I go from thing like that to thing like that to thing like that. Um, and I allowed that to become my truth. And now I'm seeing that clearly. And now I'm seeing the ways in which I was unable to grow or stretch myself or experience anything other than that repeatedly because I could not let that go. That was my story, that was my narrative, and that was my energy. And by breathing life into it constantly and by identifying with it completely, I doomed myself to that fate. And now I'm getting clarity on that. That's why my life never looked the way that I wanted it to. Um, you have the Seven of Cups here on the bottom of the deck. And this is like, and now, now that I see this, now that these decisions are in my hands, now that I can go after anything that I desire, I'm, I'm confronted with unlimited possibilities where once all I saw were eight swords in every direction. And I really didn't even see those because I was blindfolded and cuffed of my own design. Now, all I can see is like all of the unlimited possibilities and where do I go? Which direction do I take? What do I choose? Getting the Wheel of Fortune, the Eight of Pentacles in reverse, and the Nine of Swords upright. Wow. Interesting. Your Wheel of Fortune is being clarified by the Lovers in reverse. And, you know, this is giving me that sense of kind of allowing life to show you the direction it wants you to go in before you sort of take over with your free will choices. It's, it's kind of like saying, well, in a way it's a pretty deep, uh, expression of trusting the universe of trusting faith. 
right? Because you're saying, you know, what if I don't just decide right now? What if I don't just pick one direction or go in one direction? What if I just open all of the directions up to life and I see which doors open or I see who life brings to me? Um, and I trust it. Instead of feeling like I need to be in control and that everything is on my, is my responsibility and that everything is my choice. Like, what if I just open up to life and say, okay, all right, divine, show me what direction to go in. Show me, show me by what things work out for me, which way I need to go or which way is my path or what is meant for me at this time. And it's also really an expression too of just trusting that you are exactly where you're meant to be and that everything is exactly as it should. Um, with the Eight of Pentacles and the Five of Swords in reverse, again, this is this feeling of, I don't, you know, uh, I love the energy of the Eight of Pentacles. And so when it came out reversed, it sort of, it kind of threw me for a loop. But as I sat with the energy for a moment, I really realized that it is actually a very positive expression here. You know, the eight of pentacles is where we're putting the work in and where we're mastering ourselves, and where, you know, it's kind of, it's all in our control day in, day out. We're really putting the effort here. We're really focused on it. We're really, you know, we're, we're focused on doing this work, right? And with the, the five of swords, you know, this is our mental body and how, you know, when we get too much in our head, we confuse ourselves, and, you know, and two, it, it can also be where thinking isn't always in our best interest, you know, searching for the answer can sometimes lead to greater confusion, right? Than greater clarity. And that's how I feel about this is, is sort of, I don't want to say taking a break, but it is sort of in that way of like, I don't have to have all the answers. I don't have to control everything. I can leave some things up to fate. And with the full card on the bottom of the deck, and I don't know if you guys can see it, but the, the full card is staggered here. And I can see this is the emperor the, where it's staggered. You see that? Um, I hope that's on camera. I can't really tell. But the the thing is there is a progression happening here there is something that is like almost encouraging either you or someone in your vicinity or possibly both this can be a mirrored energy to just listen to your gut instinct just go with what feels right don't think about it don't feel like oh my god i have to work 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 i have to make everything work out i have to get this person to do this and i have to do this and i have to be here at the right time and i got to do this and i got to do it like let that go give yourself a break give it some space and just allow yourself to follow the the path that the universe is kind of opening up for you and listen first and foremost to your gut and your intuition like what do you feel you have to do? What direction do you feel you have to go in? Where do you feel guided? Um, and making that your top priority rather than what your mind is telling you and putting all this work and effort into some particular goal or to, you know, getting there, get, reaching a destination, crossing a finish line, something like that. This is a moment where you can sort of go with the flow. Um, with the emperor here, there is a time that is coming for you to make decisions or to take charge, but it, it's like you, there's a huge arc, right? Between the fool and the emperor. This is the zero. This is the four card, you know? Um, and it's kind of like saying there will be a time, but you have to get to that place. And the way to get to that place is, is by listening and trusting. I mean, even when you think about what comes between the full card and the emperor, you know, it's the magician, the high priestess, and the empress. 
You know, it, it, it's this energy of first listen to your gut and then with the magician, realize and recognize once you're out there that my God, you have all the tools. You are the alchemist. You can transform anything into something else. You can take whatever opportunity the universe gives you and you can transform it into anything else. You're capable of that. You absolutely are. We all are. The tarot cards belong to every single one of us. Not a single one of us is missing a single gear. We all have this in us. With the high priestess, it's like, you know, tap into this special gift that you have. That's your energy, Pisces, you know? Listen to your intuition. Allow yourself to be guided. Make it your priority to hear your intuition and your gut instinct, right? Because the full card is run by the gut. It's like, I just feel like I have to, so I'm going to, and I'll jump off a cliff if I have to, but I, I have to, you know what I mean? And you just trust that the right people and the right things will show up when they're meant to, when they need to. But you're getting there. You're going to get to this emperor energy where, yeah, you're make, you're at the helm of the ship again and you're in charge and you're, you have to make some pretty serious decisions. But until you get to that place, you know, enjoy the journey. Um, and, and you have the Nine of Swords on the bottom of this deck, which I really didn't talk about. And for me, this is just don't, don't give in to fear, you know, R realize and recognize that fear is an illusion. And that when you look at it, it frequently shrinks when you, when you say, you know, okay, uh, like I have an impending hurricane, right? And, um, I was, I was actually like really intuitively, I keep getting category four, category four, and they're they they were calling for it to be a category two. And then I think my husband texted me and said that they've raised it now to a category three and it's actually going like North. And I've been through so many hurricanes, you guys, I don't really worry. And I have a generator. I live on top of a hill. Like I, like I'm not, you know, like at some kind of huge great risk or anything. Um, but of course, you know, I, this is that moment where you really are like my fellow Floridians and all these, I, I've traveled all extensively all over the state of Florida and I have beautiful memories in every part of the state. And I love, I love Florida. Um, you know, it's very special to me and it's always hard when a hurricane hits to watch someplace you love get destroyed. Um, but instead of sitting here with fear in my heart of like, oh man, there's a hurricane coming. It's like, I look at it and I say, okay, it's not very likely that it's going, I mean, I'm sure I'll feel the effects of it because I'm close enough to, to, to the area affected. Plus like my news is calling for like 40 to 50 mile per hour winds where I live. So I will feel some effects, but instead of going, oh my gosh, I'm so scared. I'm so scared. I look at it. I look at the fear and I go, okay, but you know, I have a generator. Okay. But you know, um, the worst, a lot of the damage from hurricanes comes from flooding. And it's like, I live far enough inland and I live on top of a hill and yeah, there is sometimes flooding in my neighborhood, but not where I live. Um, and you know, it, like I've gone to the store, I've gotten food yesterday I, or the day before, I guess I pulled all the wooden stakes out of my garden. I got my garden prepared. You know, I'm like, I've done all these things. I've done everything that is within my physical control. I know that, you know, to the best of my ability, I am prepared. And now, you know, I, what all I can do is pray, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, try to figure out how to help the people that are most impacted by it. Um, but you know, fear, when you look at it, when you look it in the eye and you go, okay, well, what part of that can I, can I do something about? And what part of that is real? And what part of that is illusion? It shrinks, it disappears, it dissipates, it goes away. And, you know, um, yeah, so it's kind of like, that's your job. That's whoever this is. That's their job is just to not let fear get to them, not let fear take over, not let fear become the relevant guiding part. You know, um, it's, it's to sort of listen to all these other things and to let go and to release, but not to, you know, really get stuck in that state of fear. All right. So let me see what's happening as a result of all of this energy. Judgment and the Queen of Swords with the Nine of Wands on the bottom of the deck.
Ace of Swords. Queen of Wands, Queen of Swords, Nine of Swords again. Lord have mercy. All right, so for some of you, I do think someone from your past may be coming back to have a conversation. There may be a, a big, strong, honest, and truthful conversation coming around. You started off with the Nine of Swords, and here you have the Ace of Swords and Judgment. Um, and this could be where someone really wants to come in and bring clarity to a situation and speak the truth. Um, it can also be where you are seeing things clearly and because you are seeing things clearly, you are rising above things that at one time kind of held you down or kept you trapped. Um, and there is a big transformation in that process. Um, that is definitely going to impact your ability to be successful and victorious and it's going to take you much closer to success and victory you have the queen of swords and the queen of wands here which is kind of interesting it, it's kind of giving me this sense of you know this may not be the time for you to take action pisces this may be the time for you to attract focus on attracting what you want towards you have a clear vision in your mind of what you want your life to look like or you know, the type of life that you want to live. And with the Queen of Swords, trust your discernment to know what is compatible with that and what is not. To know what to say yes to and what to say no to. And, you know, with the Nine of Wands and the Nine of Swords here, you're definitely very close to closing out some kind of cycle here or, or completing something all together. And if this is someone coming back from your past to have a conversation, you know, th there this is a very powerful conversation. Con combination here of knowing that this person is coming back because they do well they find you attractive and they want you um and you can sort of sit in that energy of knowing that and you can be as decisive or discerning as you want to be if you want to say to this person hey look it's going to take more than this conversation for us to move beyond this place because you know i need you to put me at ease you know, I'm a bit guarded when it comes to you because of everything that we've been through. And, um, you know, I don't want to get hurt again. I don't want to be in that energy again where I was up all night worrying about the situation, feeling anxious and crying about it, you know? Um, so I, I'm going to need you to prove it to me. Like, have no fear about saying things like that or doing things like that because if that's what you need to be at peace, if that's what you need to, to, um, to kind of go for it in this connection... Um, um, oh, my neighbors were out picking the avocados off their trees and I think they brought me some avocados and here's my dog jumping at the door. Um, it, here's the thing. If this is what you need, then this, it's okay. I feel like to say it, Wh whatever it is that you feel that this, it's like, this is your time to receive. It is about you, Pisces. And, you know, you are holding some kind of card here where it's like, I, I do feel that you hold this person's happiness in your hands. You do hold some kind of card here that it's like, you know, if someone is really serious about coming back, if someone is as serious as the Ace of Swords says, to, to come back and you know, have something with you or to try to earn their way back into your life after having gone through this, what they have gone through, then there is some, room for you to say, okay, here's what I need. This is what I need in order to let go, in order to feel safe opening up to let my defenses down. I have to have it put at ease that I'm not going to be in the same place a month from now, two months from now, three months from now. All right, let's get some messages. Okay. If you're dealing with a water sign, do I still have a chance? I can't be with you. I watch your social media. I don't know what comes next. I compare others to you. If you're dealing with a fire sign, try something you've never done before. 
Someone is secretly yearning for you. I wish things could be different. Finding out the truth crushed me. If you are dealing with an earth sign, I have trouble with intimacy. I still feel the pain. Firm boundaries are needed now. Time alone or in nature will help you recharge. Someone in this connection is gripped by obsessive thoughts and does this situation align with your values and morals? If you are dealing with an air sign, you're getting, you've done the work, abundance flows to you now. Lean on your inner circle during this time. I wish we could go back. Some distance will help bring clarity and this connection is passionate but not enduring. All right, guys, this is what I have for you. I really hope it helps. I hope it brings you some peace and clarity. Um, this is like a pretty, pretty intense little reading today. So, um, yeah, I hope it helps. Until next time, guys, I send you off with all my very best. Always, always, always. Bye-bye.